She's not here. Okay, good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Welcome to today's meeting of the Jones Library Board of Trustees. I'm going to ask you, um, as per our custom, to indicate your presence vocally. Far. Here. Tammy? Here. Jean? Here. Nat? Here. And I'm Austin Sarrett. So we have a um we have a we have a quorum. I see Lee Edwards is just about to join us. So Present. I'll just wait a second. Lee? Present. Thank you. Okay, so the first order of business is to welcome to the Board of Trustees our our newest colleague, Nat Larson. Uh, we are thrilled, Nat, that you have uh, stepped up and been willing to serve in this capacity. And we look forward to working uh, to working with you uh, in the in the future. Nat, do you want to say do you want to say anything? I mean, like uh, make a an inaugural address. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I have nothing profound to say. I'm just very happy to be here and to work with all of you. And I know there's a lot to do in the coming weeks, months, um, and so on, but um, happy to join the effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The next order of business is the election of an officer, namely vice treasurer. And I would uh, be pleased to entertain nominations. Lee? I nominate Matt. Okay. Is there a second to that nomination? I second. Okay. Are there any other nominations? Okay. On the question of Nat Larson as vice treasurer, Tammy, how do you vote? Yes. Barra? Yes. Jean? Yes. Lee? Yes. Austin votes yes. Nat, Nat how do you vote? <laughs> I guess I have to abstain. I can't really <laughs> vote against myself, can I? <laughs> You can vote for yourself. <laughs> I'll, 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 um, sure, I'll vote for myself. Thank Thanks, you for the yeah, vote of confidence from everyone else. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank. That's great. Uh, there are no changes or additions to the agenda that I know of. So we will plunge forward uh, with the approval of many sets of minutes. So the first set of minutes that we need to approve are from June 4th. On this was the joint meeting between the library trustees and the Jones Library Building Committee. Is there a motion to approve? Approve. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Any corrections to the minutes of June fourth? Okay. On the question of approving the minutes of June fourth, Tammy. Yes. Uh, Farah? Yes. Jean? Yes. Nat? Since I was not a member at that time, I think it's appropriate for me to abstain. Yes. Lee? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Okay, next, um, June 10th. Motion to approve the minutes of June 10th. I move to approve. Second? Second. Next. Okay, any corrections to the minutes of June 10th? Okay, uh, on the question of approving the minutes of June 10th, Tammy. Yes. Far. Yes. Jean. Yes. Lee. Yes. Nat. Similarly, abstain. And Austin votes yes. Okay. Moving on to uh, the minutes of June 24th, motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Okay. Corrections to those minutes. Okay. On the motion to approve the minutes of June 24th, Tammy? Yes. Jean? Yes. Barr? Yes. Lee? Yes. Nat? Abstain. And Austin votes yes. Okay. We are to... Uh, July 8th, uh, motion to approve the minutes of July 8th. So moved. Second. Thank you. 
Okay, any corrections to the minutes of July 8th? Okay, on the motion to approve the minutes of July 8th, Tammy? Yes. Jean? Yes. Farah? Yes. Lee? Yes. Nat? Abstain. And Austin votes yes. Okay, thank you for, thank you for that. <laughs> Um, we have uh, 12 members of the public. Thanks for coming. Uh, now is an opportunity for public comment. If you wish to make a comment, if you would raise your virtual hand and wait to be recognized. Okay, I see one uh, Person seeking recognition, Jeff Lee. Yes, thanks. Jeff Lee from South Amherst. I have a couple questions. Uh, one regards the mill work that I've heard um, claims that the historic mill work is now being retained in the new design. Um, I'd like to understand better what that means. Um, I know in the previous design, much of the mill work was being discarded um, from walls that were being torn down. So I assume that hasn't changed. Uh, there were, were also a number of places in the old design where walls were being, uh, where millwork was being removed, the walls were being torn down and rebuilt somewhere else. And in the old design, the millwork was going to be put back on those walls. Uh, I'm wondering if that's the case in the value engineering redesign. So I, I think you owe it to the public and your potential donors to better explain what retaining the millwork means. Um, my second question has to do with the section 106 review. This is a really important chance for the public to vet the adverse effects to the historic uh, Jones Library property. And the public really has no idea what the plans are for the section 106, who's running it, um, have you submitted an updated project notification form to the Mass Historic Commission so that they can weigh in on the adverse effects to the value engineering changes? Um, so I'm hoping you will um, sooner rather than later answer those questions so we know what to expect. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Jeff. All right, I see no other, um, I see no other hands. Okay. Uh, so we need to do some committee appointments, uh, and this is the proposal for the committee appointments. Uh, budget will be chaired by Lee Edwards, and Nat Larson will also be a member. Um, investment will be chaired by Nat Larson, and Austin Sarrett will be a member. And the budget coordinating group, Nat will join me as a member of the budget coordinating group. Any questions about those committee assignments? Okay. Uh, thank you for the work that you will do on those committees. Okay, next are reports from various committees. I want to start with the library building uh, committee. Uh, we have gone through the value engineering uh, activity that we sought to do over the course of the summer. The project, the current designs are being reviewed by various town boards and committees. It's gone through the design review board and the uh, planning board. Uh, both of those groups raised uh, concerns about the roofing material and uh, recommended that the library seek to use synth synth synthetic slate uh, rather than asphalt uh, shingles. Uh, the design review committee also um, was concerned about the window treatment. Uh, the planning board did not impose a condition about the window uh, treatment. Uh, we will have another uh, meeting with the planning board to review um, the retaining wall that we seek to put up between our property and the um, and the strong house. 
and then we will have a meeting uh, with the uh, Amherst Historical Commission to review uh, the proposal. Uh, the value engineering uh, activity, I think, went very well. Uh, we have managed to save some substantial amount off of the original design while retaining uh, what I think is the essence of the proposal. Uh, the library that we seek to build will, uh, I think, substantially uh, attain the um, goals that we've set out uh, from the beginning. Um, we are proposing to reinstall. We had originally thought of taking the historic mill work down. We've um, asked the architect, we asked the architect to put it back in. And so it will be where it was uh, in the prior design. Uh, and once we are through the, the uh, meeting with the Amherst Historic Commission, um, whatever changes are required um, by them, we'll be in a position where we can uh, really tee the project up for bid. Uh, the pre-qualification process has been ongoing. Sharon, I, does it end? It ends very soon, doesn't it? Correct, Wednesday. Yeah, <clears throat> so so uh, we will see uh, how many contractors and some contractors go through the pre-qualification uh, process. Uh, Sharon, do you want to say a word about the 106 process? Uh, we're still uh, working with the uh, NEH and HUD um, and in the process of hiring a consultant to oversee uh, possibly to contract with the town. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, great. And do you have any sense of when we are likely to be in a position uh, to initiate the 106 process? Not, not at this point. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, Farah. Sharon, and just, uh, just to be clear, and who will be involved? I know there's a committee, and what will the committee consist of? I mean, who will the committee consist of? Yeah. So, really, all the, all the details have yet to be worked out, and um. Ooh, ooh. Everybody who wants to play a role will be invited to play a role. To, um, certainly, comment on on everything, um, but that's really for now. That that's all we can say because okay. we're still we're still working out the, de the 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 details, the timeline, and all of that. It doesn't make sense to you know put out guesses right now. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then, um, as you will remember, we the, the library is uh, funding and paying for uh, the redesign work that was done by FAA. Sharon, do you want to say anything about how the invoice process is going to work? Uh, yeah, uh, so the town pays the bills, and then we, <laughs> the library, reimburses um, through, you know, right through Vanguard. It's a, an electronic transfer, so it's it's pretty quick. So does the town, the FAA is billing the town, the town is paying, and then the town is? They send us an uh, an invoice. They send us an invoice, and the invoice gets paid. And that, yeah. that process takes how long? Oh, it could... It could take a few days up to a week uh, because we have to, you know, we have our checks and balances. The invoice comes in through me and then I give it to the business manager uh, and then a trustee needs to come in and sign and then we need to send notice to Vanguard. So it, you know, a week. Okay. Um, any questions about uh, the building committee? Okay. Thank you. Next, uh, for our buildings and facilities. So we spent some time talking about um, 
like what was going on with the AC and because there was some breakdowns like the Woodbury room and some of the other spaces in the library, roof leaks happened during the rains. Um, but we spent a large portion of our meeting talking about plan B. And um, we talked about the timeline, which will begin and the, the well, what Sharon and uh, George shared with us was that the feasibility study would start with that for the HVAC system, replacement of the fire alert system, abatement in the children's room. Um, so just the list of necessary repairs. <clears throat> but um, the the one question I kept asking them was if the bids don't come in within budget, whether we'll be ready to pivot the next day. And that seems to be the plan. Um, there was some meeting with Kuhn Riddle to talk about updating, um, I mean, doing assessment of or an estimate of what it would cost. And I think if I'm right, Sharon, that would cost about 44,000. Can you correct me? If that's correct, yeah, to update the 2020 accessibility study. Yeah, and the one question I think that I just really needed to clarify because I had heard so much about how we could do plan B, just even the basics could be done for five or six million. So that's one of the things that Sharon had a conversation with the architects. And there are certain things that we would have to like the the roof, right? She said that it had to be double glazed uh, glass, triple glazed glass. And then the millwork was not even part of the consideration, right? Because they have to do asbestos abatement. So there's no, as I understand, there's no guarantee of restore, of retaining the millwork. I mean, the staircase and the fire, the fireplaces, yes, but this millwork that we have so many discussions about, there is no guarantee regarding right. that, right? That's what we, right. I just wanted to keep clarifying because I know there's a lot of debate in the community about the millwork. So we just wanted to make sure about that. And um, the elevator would have to be replaced, right? That's another thing we talked about because EMTs cannot get into the elevator with the stretch and that would affect all three floors, correct? Uh, so this is all the, and wasn't there something about switching to electricity due to the thing on the natural gas usage, Sharon? Can you just? I yeah, so the F, the, the, the 2020 accessibility study was, was uh, envisioning everything, all systems, would be replaced in kind. So you'd get the exact same atrium, but it would be triple pane and you would still have natural gas, uh, which would mean you'd have to make the, the line into the building larger. Um, and so what Kuhn Riddle is saying, this is one of the reasons why the study that was proposed in 2020 and priced out cannot be done now because of the upgraded uh, building code and sustainability codes, energy codes. Um, and so that is why the $44,000 price tag, because Kuhn Riddle would have to uh, hire another engineering firm in order to help do those uh, do those designs and do those cost estimates again. Um, she said avoiding uh, accessibility upgrades, you know, uh, avoiding the ADA compliance is, is probably not possible um, because of the expense. She says everything's gone up between 20 and 40 percent since 2020, uh, depending on the trade. Um, and so, so yeah, plan B is really expensively scary. Yeah, and we are going to do a walkthrough with them for them to, to get a sense of what they need to concentrate on just for the basics for plan B, right? Um, so I think that was it. I mean, it was a lot of, there's still so many questions up, but we do have a process in place and they're like, things are happening simultaneously, but they just can't happen until we know what's going on with the bids. 
but people are working behind the scenes. George is working on a RFP. Okay, questions for buildings and facilities. Yeah. Yes, just on that um, Kuhn Riddle estimate of um, 40 some thousand to do their work. Is that something that um, we have already asked them to do or will ask them to do? Burr? Yeah, uh, we'll ask them to do if the bids don't come uh, come in within budget. No, we, so we're we're not going to spend the forty four thousand uh, dollars. What what she's offered to do is is write us a letter explaining exactly what Farah and I just said um, in in more technical terms, just so that we have we have something in writing from something other than me and Farah and 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 you all. So, uh, but yeah, if if Plan B goes into effect. Um, it, again, like I've said, it it this it will be a piecemeal process. Uh, it'll be you know here and there, whatever the town can afford over the years. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Nat, another question. Okay. Yes, just to follow up and and make sure I understand. Uh, so, what we're not going to ask them at this point to do that. Um, but even if they were to do that, that would not be Plan B. Because as I understand it, plan B is over many, many years. And the, the case, what they were originally talking about was a you know, one-time project to do everything. Is that correct? Yeah. So um so yes. Yeah, so I, you know, I've spoken with the town manager about this. And as everybody knows, you know, things can change. So if um certainly doing it in two or three phases would be much, much cheaper to the town than doing it over the course of 10 plus years. So so that $44,000 study, if it were to be completed, it could be a plan B, but that would be up to the town to decide if that's what they would want to do. Uh, but right now the town manager's stance is, you know, no, the library project goes to the end of the line so they could do other projects and they'll just get to us when they can kind of a thing. Thank you for asking that. And we'd have to go through the JCPC process, correct, Sharon? Yeah. So, also, yeah. the plan B would also involve the library uh, relocating to an interim location during various phases of plan B, as opposed to just one time with the renovation expansion project. So I want to just be myself um, as clear as I can be. I mean, there, there really is, I mean, plan B means different things. So what it means in the first instance is replacing the you know doing the roof work and replacing the hvac system and the library has agreed to fund up, up to 1.8 million dollars of that repair work and that repair work doesn't depend upon another coon riddle estimate um at all the coon riddle estimate it would just be to tell the town Here's what it would cost to do everything that needs to be done in the building, um, given whatever the time was that we asked them to do the estimate. So what you are doing in building and facilities, as I understand it, is really doing two things. One is you're looking at, you know, what we would do if the uh, renovation expansion project does not move forward. And that would be like looking at HVAC, looking at the roof. And then what we would do over the long term to deal with all of the um, issues that would need to be addressed. Is that is that right? That's correct. Okay. And Farah, you may have already said this. Um, could you give us a sense of, like, are our systems holding up? Um, the uh, library remains air conditioned I mean, what is the what is the status of? I mean, is George going around with bubble gum? I mean, what's he doing? 
bubblegum and buckets. Sharon, you, you could speak to what's happening this week. I have not entered the library, but it has rained. <laughs> It, it, it's so last week i mean you can't make this stuff up the building is crumbling around us we had to close the large elevator because there was water pouring in and and i'm not even sure i'm sure we'll talk about that at the next buildings and facilities i don't know what the cause of that was yeah. uh the special collections leaks are constant um the most recent one it uh are because of the tarps that are over our collection and special collections um it didn't damage anything there but we did lose uh, a handful of of our mystery books because it went down to the next oh, floor boy. uh the air conditioning here so i uh, we joke we the staff um it's better in the library than it is outside. And you can tell the air conditioning is trying to work, but it's very soupy in the building. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Um, what else is there? You know, and the constant, the, the atrium leaks, we don't even, it, that's just the norm. But bubble gum. I think I think the one thing is every time I go into the library, at least a couple of times a week, and I think the one thing I try to do is speak with the staff, you know, and it's either in the children's room or in the checkout. And, you know, everyone, I'm always like, so how are you guys feeling? And it's always, you know, they're cheerful, they're they're doing what they're doing, but they're just feeling unsettled all the time. And it's it's. But from what I gather, it's not great for morale. And it's just, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow is basically what's on their minds. So I always tell my friends to give them a lot of love when they go to the library. Lee Edwards. Do we have any idea how far $1.8 million will go toward paying uh, for the HVAC system and the roof? No, in theory, okay. we would find out if we were to uh, pay only... the 44000 Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Well, we'll find out when you put out a request for proposals, right? I mean, we don't have to have the 44000 That uh, Spend the 44000 You're going to put out a request for proposals to do HVAC work. We're going to get bids and roof work, and we're going to get bids. So we'll know at that point. Uh, whether or not the 1.8 that we have pledged to spend will cover what we need to do. Yeah. Okay. Any Anything else for buildings and facilities? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Farrah. Okay. Next on the agenda is a report from the Development Committee, Lee <laughs> Edwards. Okay. Well, the, basically, the reports are in your packet. Yeah. No. Capital Campaign Committee took in a little over $102,000 last month, and the uh, various friends fundraising groups are actively at work arranging house parties and meeting with donors, both old donors and new donors. Um, and the friends have planned a library fundraiser in the form of a pickleball contest which will be held the last weekend in October. And we are very excited about that, as apparently there are thousands of pickleball enthusiasts um, in, the, in, the, in the vicinity and they long to participate in tournaments. And again, it's a fundraiser and it's a friend raiser. We're gonna to try to get as much publicity as we can uh, to advertise this on behalf, as a fundraiser, on behalf of the Jones. And the annual fund is quite interesting. Uh, this year, uh, so far, we've received 38 gifts, totaling a little more than $17,000. As compared with, at the same time last year, 21 gifts and a little over $4,000. So as I frequently say, um, Fundraising is an adventure, and you know exactly what you're going to get exactly when you get it. Um, it's very encouraging. And, uh, you know, I think the visibility of the Friends and all the hard work that the Friends are doing on behalf of the library 
and to publicize uh, all the wonderful things the library does that the friends support in the way of programming um, is benefiting the library. So it's, it's pleasing. Lee, did I read this correct? The annual fund came in at $110,806. Yeah. A little less than the year before. A couple thousand less, I think, yeah. 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 And can you say anything about um, the conversations that you were having with donors in terms of... Well, you know, given... thinking and... There's a lot of confusion uh, because there are different entities putting out different um, interpretations, accounts, different accounts. Uh, and so uh, all of us on the Capital Campaign Committee who are working with donors um, are providing accurate information uh, in a fluid situation because the value engineering changed things um, to explain what's going on and to reiterate our sense that the library needs to be both renovated in the old building and expanded. And the central point on behalf of the expansion is the library cannot adequately serve the community, cannot provide the programming that it needs to provide that it wants to provide in the existing space. Uh, the only way to get more programming space insofar as it would be possible in the old building would be to co be completely gutted and then rearrange the space more efficiently than it is. And nobody wants to do that. And so in the current configuration, um, uh, special collections is ill-served. The Burnett Gallery, is ill-served. There's no room for the Civil War tablets. There's no teen space. And that is my particular hobby horse, as something that I think is disgraceful. And ESL is very, very badly served. As, and if you imagine yourself as an ESL user who's not completely fluent in English, uh, trying to navigate, trying even to find ESL and then to go from the administrative space to where the actual services are being provided is quite complicated, especially in a day when the elevators aren't even working. So we Thank need you. to renovate and expand. Thank you, Lee. Okay, questions for the development committee. As always, please convey the gratitude of the trustees to uh, the friends and the folks who are doing uh, really wonderful work uh, on the Capital Campaign Committee. We are incredibly grateful. Happy to do it. Okay. Uh, next is personnel planning and policy, Tammy. Okay, um, at a prior meeting, we were asked to look at conflict of interest, municipal records retention, whistleblowing, and Sharon looked into this, and obviously all of us who take the conflict of um, interest uh, from the state know that that's adequately, more than adequately covered. That's something that has uh, to look forward to. Um, municipal records retention, Schedule for public libraries. Um, there, there are uh, requirements for the retention of, of municipal records on file. And Tammy, the state law. You, it, it, you're very soft. I just wonder if you oh. could maybe hold the microphone a little close to your mouth or something. Well, my microphone's on my. On okay. My, yeah. All right. I'll try to speak louder. Um, the whistleblower. The state law also. The state also has. Um, information on whistleblowing and the personnel manual for town workers covers a lot of these things about issuing complaints and retaliation. So the items that we were asked to look into are covered either by the state, by the town personnel manual, or some standards for municipal records retention. So we did look into those. We were asked to um, previously look into those. 
Um, so I think that we feel confident that those uh, issues are covered on various bases. Um, I would like to update you. I appreciate everyone who responded to the director's evaluation request. We got um, a lot of responses this year from the public, from the staff, and from all of you who filled it out. Um, I'm hoping to have a draft um, to the next PPP meeting and then bring it to the board in September. Um, that's my hope for timeline. Um, I just wanted to update you on that. And then I'll ask um, Farah to report on the JEDI committee. Do you have anything to report, Farah? Yeah, I do, but um, can I ask a quick question, Tammy? Yeah. What is the whistleblowing part? Is that just, I have this whole thing about, you know, uh, NSA and all that, but is it just like complaints about employees? Yeah, I mean, the state, the, the state has a law covering whistleblowers. And that's also mentioned, and it's mentioned in the town's insurance policy. Um, issues of retaliation, if you complain about a, a supervisor or somebody in town, the personnel manual has a whole section. I, I serve on the personnel board, so we've been dealing with the updated personnel uh, manual, but that has a lot of information on retaliation. If you make a complaint that if you, were, if, if you retaliated against, there's uh, a grievance process that that uh, okay. is available through the town. So I just wanted, I know whistleblowing, you don't think about whistleblowing as far as libraries are concerned, um, but it was something that we were asked to look into um, by a previous um, board member. Okay, thank you. And do you want to report on, yeah. on JEDI? Yeah, um, so we met last month um some point um we talked a little bit about the 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 re the renovation expansion project but then we talked about the survey that we closed and the survey just to remind everyone was on whether the community feels a sense of belonging in the library and we are in the process so, Mia sort of compiled the responses and, you know, for the most part, people, the one big thing that came that that was clear was everyone feels like the staff are amazing, that they always feel welcome. That was the majority of the responses. Um, but there were the few people who didn't feel a sense of belonging or they felt like you know, sometimes when teens are there, they're frowned upon if they're loud, which is another good case for the teen space, Lee. Um, and there was the one person who said that we didn't have enough conservative, conservative material in the library, like sources. So that was just something that kind of stood out, but which made total sense. So our next thing is that a couple, Mia and one of the other members is going to compile the information into a report, which we will eventually present here at, at the trustee meeting. So we have some sort of a plan of action and develop an equity framework. Um, we did talk about a little bit about what's going on. Oh, we did talk about maybe down the road having listening section listening sessions for we were just throwing out different ideas to see how to get the community more involved but we did talk about one of the things was the town dei uh uh pamela nolan nolan young is they're doing those beloved community uh workshops which i've actually gone to the last two i went to the one on microaggressions and allyship but we talked about how maybe we could get the staff to go and make time or room. But I mean, most of them are at six o'clock. So, but even so, it's a full day for someone working from nine in the morning. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. We're meeting uh, this in a couple of weeks at 1130 on the 8th, on the 16th at 1130. 
Um, and oh, we did have all of us had a little homework and we had to send our takeaways from the survey results to Mia and Raphael. So Sharon, I hope you did your homework. Um, and that's that's it. Thank you, Farah. Good work. I think that's it for the PPP. If anyone has questions. Um, Tammy, I just I, I want to make sure I understand. I remember the question that was asked. Um, if someone complains, like they don't like the way they're being treated by their supervisor, there is a process for them to do that. There is a very thick personnel manual that Correct. goes to every employee of the town. And it has information there on what process you would initiate if you made a complaint and felt that you there was some level of retaliation. Right. So there, there is a whole process in there. And um, even uh, some people who have not been happy with that process have actually come to the personnel board. Um, so yeah. the reason I wanted to, I just want to be clear that I understand, is there a difference between the, what I'm going to call ordinary personnel procedures for someone that wants to complain? They, you know, the supervisor promised them two weeks of vacation and then reneged. Or the supervisor promised them a salary increase and then reneged. Uh, is there a difference in the town procedures between that, which I would call, again, ordinary personnel uh, procedures and something called whistleblowing? Well, whistleblowing is, there is a state law that covers whistleblowing. Right. Do you want to just give us a definition of what whistleblowing is? Because typically it's not thought of as, I'm unhappy that my supervisor didn't give me a week's vacation. Okay. If you saw something illegal going on or you uh -huh. felt that money was being appropriated, right. something illegal uh -huh. or something... Um, under, uh, I guess, basically illegal or underhanded, something that, that involves not a crime per se, but close to, that then there is a whistleblower um, uh, state law that covers how this would be treated. Right, but that's different from the yeah. ordinary, yeah. okay. And I, I don't, um, I think it's highly unlikely that whistleblowing is something that would happen in the town, but um, never say never. Um, yep. But there are processes in, in place for that statewide. Um, okay. Okay, other questions for PPP? All right, thank you, Ta Tammy. Thank you, Farah. Okay, next is the budget, Sharon. Oh, so I thought Nat and Lee would give the report. Just kidding. Um, so, so FY twenty four is almost almost in the books. We've um, we've got almost everything over to the auditors, uh, including um, the the town also sends our our account information to the auditors. Uh, so soon we'll be able to start putting together a reworked FY twenty five budget. Um, just a quick snapshot: we had budgeted. Uh, in expenses for FY24, uh, 2,938,727 dollars, but we spent a, a little less than that, 2,805,244 dollars and 45 cents. And uh, regarding income, we had budgeted uh, 2,938,727. dollars but we actually brought in a little bit more, $2,995,514. Um, and uh, what I love is from between restricted gifts and grants and, and all the work that the friends did, friends in Woodbury, we had budgeted uh, $255,477, but we actually received $275,411. So, um, 
all great. I, you know, I went through the detail and I'm happy to entertain questions if you guys have had a chance to look on it, but there's really nothing, there's nothing out of the ordinary. FY24 was, was very, very smooth. Um, yeah, so that's my quick budget update. Happy to take questions. Questions for Sharon about the budget. Yep, Lee. It's not a question. I just want to under underline what what the budget shows and what Sharon has also pointed out, uh, partly because a former trustee was very concerned that the budget was misaligned and that at the end of the day, the budget report would show deficit rather than um, balances left over and was also very concerned that if there were balances left over, that it would be improper somehow to use them to benefit the library. Uh, and so I just want to underscore that in every place where fundraising has been occurring, it has benefited the library in excess of what the library needed to use in the year. And that this is, to my mind at least, a perfectly sensible uh, putting away of reserves so that you have it when you actually need it and that would not be an improper use of reserves so thank you Sharon I think this is terrific yeah thank you and again thank you to all the friends uh and then uh regarding the I'm sorry I'm moving ahead to investment already but I have um hold on, just, hold on one more second any anything about the budget okay thank you Sharon uh, so the value as of July 31st uh, for the foundation, the endowment is $9,397,833.25. And the Woodbury Fund as of July 31st was $760,553.22. All great news. Right, until yesterday. Well... Yeah, I know. <laughs> I didn't look at it this morning, but uh, yeah. No, no, no need. <laughs> so I wanted to raise a question, uh, which I hope the board can consider in September. And the question I wanted to raise is whether or not we would be well served by getting rid of the separate investment committee and making the supervision of the investments part of the work of the budget committee. So right now, it's a kind of odd structure because the budget committee looks at all sources of income, right? They're talking about fundraising and town contribution. And then we've got the separate committee that deals with investments. Uh, under Section 8 of the trustee bylaws, we are allowed to uh, organize standing committees and ad hoc committees uh, as as needed to do the work of the board. And I've wondered for a long time about the separation between the investment committee and the and the budget committee and whether or not that is a wise uh, a wise thing to do. Um, the particular work of the investment committee is to work with our investment advisors uh, to make sure that our investment policies are, being realized in practice. Uh, so I want us to think about it and maybe we can talk about it next time about whether or not we really need to separate these two committees or whether we can consolidate uh, the investment committee and the budget committee. We could call it the budget and investment committee, though I don't know that you need a, a separate designation. So any thoughts about that, at least as a preliminary? Yeah, Nat. Yes, well, as the newly named head of the investment committee, <laughs> I, I just want to say that I would have uh, no qualms whatsoever about getting rid of the investment committee. Um, that from, again, I'm new to this and I'll have to look at it in more detail, but in looking at the uh, guidelines that we have for our investment advisors and how um, uh, really narrow their discretion is, you know, we have a very, very uh, clear um, 
you know, asset uh, guidelines for them to follow. Um, so it doesn't seem to me like there's actually very much for the investment committee um, to do. So uh, I'll look at it further, but my initial inclination is, yeah, it makes sense to have all those kind of financial matters um, under the umbrella of uh, one group. Thank you. Tammy? Um, we usually have two, two board members on a committee, um, but I wonder if, if, if we do merge these two together, if it would be wise to have more than two because of the, the you know broader scope of the budget committee. I just was curious if that was a thought. Well, we can think about the composition of the committee. Um, you know, if we want to alter the composition of the committee and um, Lee and Nat, you know, going to be carrying the, the ball on the budget committee um, can think about whether or not th this is a, you know, a task that they can take on and do it reasonably well. Thank um, you. I don't know, Nat, whether your hand is up still or you've got another question. Sharon? Yeah, so my my initial r reaction is, so Nat hit the nail on the head. Um, the, it, it seems like the investment committee doesn't do a lot. I, I would put it differently. I, I would say the work is different. Um, and it does concern me a little bit about meeting prep. So it, it's different. It's different and, it, it's, it's, and it's the same. So uh, yes, the investments absolutely have everything to do with the budget. And yet the budget committee gets deeper into the weeds as far as day-to-day -day workings go. So um, uh, th uh, that's my initial initial reaction is it, it would mean the focus would kind of change during those budget meetings. It, it would just be different. It would be different. I'm not, I mean, <laughs> things would be added that the budget committee would have to do. The budget committee would, you know, again, do what the investment committee did if that's what it wanted and, and you know, meet quarterly with the you know, investment advisor and hear what their market projections are and review periodically the investment policy of the board in terms of how much we take out of the, uh, out of the endowment. Uh, but again, that's, I mean, we can make a judgment about whether or not we think that that's too much for the budget committee to take on or whether it would distract the budget committee from other things that it um, that it has to do. Uh, it just strikes me it's an artificial separation of the financial side of the work of the Board of Trustees, which I think might be better concentrated in one group rather than two groups. And of course, the budget committee has to rely on the investments to help fund the budget. So uh, I think if people can think about this and Sharon will put it on the agenda for next time, uh, you can actually do a little work for us, if you would, if you don't mind, and see you know, what the standard operating procedure is for any other libraries that are like ours that have this, um, uh, you know, this endowment management um, issue. And then we can talk about it. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't see Rich Morse here or Lewis, so I'm not sure whether we have a report from the friends. I assume we do not. Okay, next item is the director's report. Sharon. Uh, I have a request, uh, a, a Woodbury funding request, uh, which was approved by the Friends on July 23rd, that $750 be withdrawn from the Woodbury Fund for conversations with the classics with Seth Rothberg. So we need to vote on the removal okay is there a motion so moved is there a second second 
Okay, the discussion of the $750 allocation. Okay, on the motion, Tammy? Yes. Nat? Yes. Jean? Yes. Farah? Yes. Lee? Yes. And Austin votes yes. Sharon? Uh, that is really all. Uh, happy to answer questions. So I have a I have a um, I have a question um, about patterns of library usage and whether or not you and the staff have noticed any changes post COVID in the pattern of library usage um, in terms of people coming into the building, people sitting and staying in the building, people using library. Uh, library resources. That's the first question. The second question has to do with what's going going on at the branches, uh, in particular with the new, you know, new North Amherst um, library. So, is there anything that you can say about patterns of library use, uh, which are not indicated by circulation statistics? I would say people are staying longer. Um, I would, I would, and this is just my gut. I don't have any statistics to, uh, we don't keep track of, Hey, how, I know you're, you're leaving right now. How long were you here for? Yeah. But I, uh, I feel like people are here longer. Uh, that being said, people are still wearing masks. So COVID is still with us and it's very possible. It will always be with us. Um, uh, but, you know, if you look at our, our statistics about um, uh, virtual programming, you know, we don't have, we hardly have any of that anymore. So people are, uh, you know, coming into the Woodbury room for a packed children's program, um, which incidentally is exactly what was happening when the elevator stopped oh, and, and the water was gushing in. We were having a, 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 a dancing with your baby. Um, Sing with your baby. Sorry, program. It was just getting out. And so families with their toddlers and their strollers, they actually had to carry their strollers upstairs. Sorry, that's a side note. Um, so I would say people are staying longer. Um, regarding the branches, people just are, are thrilled with the branches. Um, the staff at the branches love working there. And um, there's kinks that need to be worked out with the with with both meeting rooms and reserving it because they have to go through um, the town. So that's a little frustrating at times, but overall, it's quite lovely. Um, and the North Amherst Library, yeah, I think the, uh, the northern part of town absolutely is benefiting from uh, this uh, new expanded branch and 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 the experience there. Um, so really all, all really great stuff. So I want to come back because uh, just one, one thing I was just also asking, not just how long people are staying, but the pattern of traffic into the building. So based on what you've observed or what the staff has observed, uh, is the traffic into the building kind of what it has been? Is it going up? Is it going down? Any sense of that? Please hold. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't have those figures in front of me. It just, the gut says it's, it's still, uh, for the same reason people are staying longer and more and more people are coming back to the programs. Uh, COVID is seeming to have less of an impact. Uh, but the impact has not left us entirely. Okay. Bar. Yeah, Sharon, I was just thinking it's probably more traffic in terms of young people in the summer, right? Because every time I've come in there, it feels like it's louder, especially the children's room area. And I actually see teens wandering or around the library or it's definitely the busy season for yeah. uh, for for public libraries in general, the summer reading program when when kids are out of school. So um, yeah, the hustle and bustle is awesome. And so that's, you know, during the summer and the teens, our teen lounge is very, very popular. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, that's the mm -hmm. thing. So yeah. 
So I just want to stick with this one more second, Sharon. When librarians talk around the state, do, are they reporting declines in library use? No. No. Are they? What are they talking about? Are they talking about uh, increases in library use, or that's not a subject? No. Um librarians right now across the state are talking about uh book banning and and access to online uh, online resources and and the cost being prohibitive and um yeah people aren't talking about attendance figures anymore yeah so there is not a, a widespread belief that public libraries are not being used by their communities Oh, gosh, no, 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 um, no, quite the opposite. And again, I don't have the statistics in front of me, but people go to public libraries more than they go see baseball games, et cetera. So no, people need their libraries, love their libraries, need their libraries. All right. Okay. Any other questions for the director? Okay. Sharon, can you remind us when our next meeting is? I think September 9th is what I saw. It's a Monday, September 9th. Does that still work for everybody? Uh, if it is a Monday, it would not work for me. Um, yeah, I don't. September 9th, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't. I... I can't do it on Mondays. Can, Can we do you? that Tuesday or Wednesday? Because about... Tuesdays, are we, do we usually have buildings and facilities, uh, Sharon? Yeah, uh, depending on the, the week, we can, uh, you know, getting the trustees together is more important. And then whatever subcommittee, whatever committees are affected, we can, we can change that afterwards. So if you want to, if you all want to change the meetings to the second Tuesday of each month at nine. Uh, it's not going to work, not going to work for me. Okay. Um, nine o'clock in the morning, depending on the day is best for me, probably on a Friday. Does that work for people? The 13th is not good for me, but otherwise it's fine. Fridays possible for people. Works for me. Uh, can we, Sharon? How about, could... how about the twentieth at nine, oh. and and then from there go to no far that doesn't work. Oh no, I'm just I just want to say I have jury duty on the eighteenth, and I'm hoping it does not uh, extend into anything because I need to do my work. But I just wanted to put it out there, just in case. But you'll still have a quorum. So the, the 20th at 9 o'clock, Sharon, and then we'll have to readjust our schedule going forward. And then it would be October 11th if we did the second Friday of every month. So why don't, why don't we... I won't be here September uh, 20th. Oh. What about the sixth? Uh, what about for that week? What about the eighteenth, which is a Wednesday? I have personnel board that morning. We haven't met okay. since. So I start I jury. I have to report for jury duty yep. at eight. Okay. So, um, could we do the sixth of September, which is a Friday? So that's that's roughly a month. Okay, that's okay with me. Okay with me. Matt, Jean, everybody okay? The sixth yeah. at nine o'clock yep. in the morning. Yep. That works. Okay, and then Sharon, if you would look for subsequent Fridays and send us like for the rest of the fall, that would be good. You got it. Okay, so our next meeting is at nine o'clock on. Um, Oops, sorry, I just looked. I can't do the six. <laughs> oh no, I can't do the six. 
I guess we just can't meet. Well, <laughs> well sh should we do a later time in the day? Well, I was, that's what I was going to ask. Could we meet on the 6th at the end of the day? Because nothing's more fun than a trustee meeting <laughs> at, at five o'clock. I'll try it. <laughs> so could we meet, let's say, at four o'clock on the 6th? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry about the back and forth about the meeting. So let's put it in for four o'clock on September 6th. Okay. I okay. think we are... I think we are done. It's great to see everybody again. Welcome, Nat. And, yes, you're uh, welcome. Look forward yeah. to seeing seeing you all soon. The meeting is adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.